Assalamualaikum and hello. My name is Nur Farahin binti Tajul Arif and my metric number is 054991. Um, now I'm going to present the individual presentation for the jurisprudence in relates to the act that we have been tasked with. So this only focuses on what uh, on my part which I have done in the group present in the group book. So this is the table of content. I start with the overview or what of overview of uh, my group act and why we choose this topic as our act and we I also relate with the jurisprudence um, since this act um, is required to relate some provisions or sections with jurisprudence and provision chapter education and uh, education is my part on what I have done in my group so this is the overview of my uh, group act where uh, the group act name as Women and Girls Protection Act. The reason that we choose this matter or Women and Girls Protection is um, our group. Our act is that um, I believe that even though as uh, years goes by and the issues uh, involving a woman have been lessened, such as more girls going to school and few for child marriage and more women is serving in the parliament and also uh, many women involved in positions in the leadership. But nevertheless, it still cannot be denied that there are still challenges um, or some challenges is put upon the women such as underrepresented at all levels of political leadership one in five women and girls had reported physical and sexual violence so with this act um, we hope or i hope is that it could be helping those women and girls for more protection and provide them more benefits uh, so for the chapters arrangement in the women's and girls protection act is that um, first uh, we start with the preliminary met pre preliminary chapters as usual for every act and then we followed with uh, education that which is this is my part where I divided into three the national education system rights of education and protections in education so now moving on to the types of jurisprudence as the act as the women's in protection act is required to relate with some theory or some idea from the jurisprudence uh, we insert it in our provision. So, uh, here there is uh, two types, which is Western jurisprudence and Islamic jurisprudence. For Western jurisprudence, it basically emerged from the Roman law, where the English term is based on the Latin word jurisprudential. Juris means genitive form of just, uh, which is law, and prudential means knowledge. So, this um, jurisprudence seeks to analyze, explain, classify, and criticize entire bodies of law, ranging from contract to thought to constitutional law, whereby for Islamic jurisprudence, which also called as fiqh, means deep understanding. Technical meaning of Islamic jurisprudence or fiqh is that body of Islamic law extracted from detailed Islamic sources, i.e. Quran and Sunnah, Ijtihad, um, Sa'ad Azharai, Istihsan, and the process of gaining knowledge of Islam through jurisprudence. So principles in Islamic jurisprudence is that, uh, or also known as Sul Afrik, is a study and critical analysis of the origin sources and principle upon which Islamic jurisprudence is based. So now we moving. Now I move to the part whereby um, in sections which I had inserted in this act and we relate with the either juris, um, Western jurisprudence or Islamic jurisprudence. So here, uh, it's related with the Western jurisprudence in regards to the sociologists. Um, for these sections, um, there are two sections, but it basically relates with each other. But since section four uh, talks about the categories of each educational institution, whereby there are three categories, i.e. the government educational, government aided and private. But the difference is that I inserted uh, that pre-education, primary education and secondary education in Malaysia must have a woman and child department relating to child and teenage matters. The reason that I add this is because um, by having a women and child department in the education, uh, they can focus more on the issues or any problems in regards to the child and teenage matters rather than uh, having a department that focus on more either in the problems of education in terms of um, fees, education, education fees or the um, the, the placement for students in the university. So I wanted to have a separate part where this department focus more on the child and teenage matters. 
So what does this department's function is that they responsible to analyze and solve issues pertaining to matter of child and teenage in the institution where um, some of it involve supervise the child interaction especially in pre-education and primary education with other sex and adult teacher and mandate the female teachers at primary primary institution to expose the awareness regarding the menstruation which this is a special part when since um, there is not so much act in Malaysia which put an importance in regards to the menstruation matters. So, how does these sections or provisions relate with sociological jurisprudence? Basically, sociological jurisprudence, according to Roscoe Pound, is that law is more than a set of, a set of abstract norms, uh, which it is also a process of balancing conflicting interests and securing the satisfaction of the maximum of ones with minimum of friction. So, the crux in this jurisprudence is that law should be studied from the perspective of the society and the social science method being utilized to achieve that purpose. So uh, this sociological jurisprudence it has contributed which um it had contributed where considerable impact have help focus greater attention on institutions such as tribunals and different techniques of decision making and conflict resolution such as alternative dispute resolution. And Harry Chan stated that um by Sociologist jurisprudence, it helped to understand the evolution of law in better manner where the element of human interest provides a greater substratum of identity rather than focus the structure of law itself. So, this relates with the provision in balancing the interests of women and girls in education. Since um, it is supervised, there is a social science involved in this sections um, by implement which uh, which i said which i put the point where it implement and utilize the law to focus in the society perspective whereby the learning of law could be observed i.e how much the formal law followed modified and implemented and the application of social science techniques increase the efficacy of law next sections uh, also western jurisprudence which relates with the positivist um, basically positivist according to justice austin which is and everyone know general definition of law according to him is that a command given by a sovereign and is backed by sanction. However, to HLA Hart, he classified law as two, uh, which is law imposed obligation and law that that's not imposed on duties and obligation. When law confers the power to create, uh, mo modify and extinguish rights and obligations in other person. So the sections that relate with this jurisprudence is the section seven in regards to the obligation to enter secondary education. Um, here, I put the section whereby every parent in Malaysia is obliged or obligated to send their child to study until secondary education. And failure on the parts of parents to do this, the child will dispatch to military school. And it is up, it is at the discretionary of the mandatory or Ministry of Education. How is it related is that there is a sanction. It's, rather than saying it is a sanction, it's more to... Um, if the if the parents do not do this, they will have to face some consequences. Which I put the consequences is that the child will dispatch to military school, and it's also related with L H L L H L A heart. Whereby um, since the according to him, law can create, modify, and extinguish. So the discretion of the Ministry of Education is a part of where the where they have the power to create or modify. Uh, and extinguishing rights and obligation according to what they think appropriate. Lastly, um, in regards to Islamic jurisprudence, where this more to Sa'du al Zarai. Um, here, the section that I insert in the chapter in the education education chapter is that discrimination against any students is disallowed without prejudice. Um, there shall be no discrimination against any student on the grounds only of religion, race, distance of or place of birth in approving menstrual leave and in accepting pregnant female students under the age of 18 years old to enter the institution. So how this relate with Sa'du and Zara'i? Sa'du literally means blocking and Zara'i signifies the means of obtaining a certain end. So these sources indicates blocking the means to an end and among the category under Sa'du and Zara'i is that most likely to lead to evil and if rarely if ever expected to lead to benefit. For example, free mixing between sexes. The relation with section 9 in Islamic jurisprudence can sit on the matter of equality where in the Quran, 
uh, it says that oh mankind indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another indeed the most noblest of you is in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you indeed Allah is knowing and aware that mark of my presentation uh, that's all from me thank you